Yeah, why does this always do this? I don't know though. Like, is it because I'm white, dude? Mike Tyson always pushed out of the way and fucked up. My Mike Tyson coming and fucking like, yo. You saw my face when you said that? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, make sure you cut that, though. Yo, <laughs> cut that. That's, that's going to be the intro. <laughs> no. I have <laughs> nothing to do with what was just said. No. <laughs> if you make the intro, you got to show my face. I was like. Last one to the airport buys breakfast. Buys breakfast. <laughs> Day one. Yeah, there's not many people on my bucket list. He definitely one of them. Yeah, nah, for, yeah. for what? To, to me? me? Yeah. 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 Who's your top three for you? Chance is Chance number one. Chance Rapper is one of my favorite rappers. Mm. Chance, this is going to be left field. Mary J. Blige. Fire. Oh, oh we can make that left field. That's easy. everybody. That's everybody. That's everybody my wife would tell you, I've been talking about Mary since I met her. Bro. Yeah. So where I don't even call her Mary. That's Mary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She on first name basis. Nah, yeah, nah. Uh, that's on everybody's bucket list. That's Mary, not left field at all. Chance. Uh, Steve Harvey. That's Steve third. Harvey. Yeah. Five, five, those, are, Harvey. those are wild. Yeah, those are go, three Eric Badu is fourth. Eric Badu? Yeah, Eric Badu is fourth. That's tough. So since all this crazy stuff been happening, who would you say you've been most excited to meet with like the craziest encounter you had so far? Top three, yeah. Top three, one was Kevin Hart for sure. Fire. Oh, uh, wait, what was that like? What you think of meeting Kevin Hart? Is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He way smaller in person. Yeah, yeah. Way, have you met him? Yeah, I have. No, I, yeah. Never, I haven't met him yet. You walk up on him, you like, <laughs> <laughs> what up, Kevin? Yeah. So I, I knew what to expect. I knew going into it, he was gonna be little. But when I got next to him, I was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. my wife four yeah. eleven, so I'm thinking he gonna be a little taller than her. Ten no. <laughs> wow. Was, he got he can't be no taller than five two. He gonna kill me when he when he hear this. He gonna yeah. kill me no taller than five. Two. Kev, don't, don't he one of the Keith, coolest man. people I've ever met yeah. though. Yeah. Right, we went to a uh for uh like a toast for his birthday. And the first thing I told him when I walked up to him, I was like, I got a gift for you, but I didn't know what size to get, so I got a small. <laughs> what, was, like, what was it? He got him like a little a build a bear t shirt. It was, <laughs> was a jacket, right? So I walked up to him and I was like, Yeah, I got a jacket for you. And I touched him, I touched his shoulder, and I was like, You ain't no small, brother. <laughs> you might be a little smaller than that. And then he tried to flex, and I was like, That made it worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might be a little smaller. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know. Then he said, You might be a little For smaller. Real? Yeah, yeah. Wait, I like a jacket is a cool. wild gift to get someone. Like... It was, we was in the uh, Prada store anyway. I'm not a, a designer person at all. So, like, now that we finally coming into being able to get stuff like right. that and do stuff like that. Yeah, we be everywhere, bro. Fire, yeah, fire. We be everywhere. Gotta Love enjoy that, bro. How was that feeling it. for y'all when it first started? Man. You had this as a kid, so I can only imagine. It's different for me, though, because, like, like obviously, because I've been, I've been working since I was young, but, like, my mom, she was, like, always so on top of, like, making sure my head was always, like, level and shit. So, like, I didn't really know what was really going on with me, like, financially, right. until I was, like, 18, like, 17, 18. That's going to be me. Obviously, I knew, yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. damn, that's I'm rich. Me. That's like, <laughs> me as a parent, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, I knew stuff parent. was coming in, but, yeah. like, I didn't know, like, the like the amount yeah. of, like, I didn't know the true amount. And then, like, that's when right. I became, like, 17, 18, my mom was like, you know, this is what we've been saving. This is what we've been doing. I'm like, damn. Like, See, I be telling people that all the time. My parents kept me really, like, outside of the loop. So it was mm. the same thing, but on the opposite spectrum. I didn't know how broke we was yeah. until we, till I got like 18, 19 and we moved to Vegas. And I was like, oh, we was in the hood of Detroit. Like, so I moved to Detroit when I was 18. So when we moved, when I got to Vegas, I started seeing everybody and started like seeing, cause Michigan is very separated. It's like, you got white people on the side, you got black people on the side, and then you got Middle Easterns on one side. And it's literally just like, a you like literally like lines. <laughs> like at, once you pass eight mile, it's literally all black people. And it's like, so I went to a school with literally 97% black people. Wow. So when I got out to Vegas and it's a melting pot and everybody around, everybody I was like, oh, this is fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's so different and it's so like, embrace. I, it's one of those things you just got to embrace. It's like, uh, you get shell shocked at first. Yeah. So you like, moved what? to Vegas when you was 18? 18. 18 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New York is kind of fire like that too, but New York, you got everything. Everybody. Everything. Everybody. I love it in New York. I don't even remember, like, like I, I forgot who said this. It was I think it might have been Chris DeStefano. He's, he's a comedian. He said, like, it's almost like, how is it possible to be racist living in New York City? That's like, a fact. Like, That's impossible. A fact. You yeah, can't. Like, yeah, I, guess, I guess some people <laughs> yeah. who are ignorant who live in that, like, they just aren't around That's anything. So they could be like, what they see is what, you know what I mean? Or what they hear is what. Vegas is the same way. Vegas is the same way. You get cultures from everywhere, right. especially mm -hmm. like 
the the way I, I'm going to try food and going right, to different right, spots. Right, right. You try every culture's food, every like, and is is dope because Vegas is one of those melting pots. Like New York, is when you walk into a spot, you don't know where you at no more. It don't right. feel like Vegas. Right. Like I love it. I it's love Vegas available to, to make like a. You get your own culture in every single spot. Like right. this is a place I go to, Lefty J's, and it's a Hawaiian spot. So where I've never been to Hawaii, but I can imagine that's what Hawaii well, feels like. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, and I feel like that's dope in, in itself. Right. New York is like that. L.A. is like that. Well, L.A. got certain parts. Yeah, L.A. is right. like that. Vegas is like that. Uh, Miami for sure is like that. Hell yeah. Uh, you go to Miami and you don't know where you at. Yeah. Right. New York, like <laughs> you literally, you can't you be racist, bro. The first five minutes of me coming outside of my crib, I'm seeing Spanish person, African person, Jamaican person, and white person. <laughs> like, like, how like, are you going to be like, like, five like, minutes? Did you take the fact. subway? How are you going to be racist? Everyone's on the subway. <laughs> yeah, like, you're like, fact. oh, I hate that. <laughs> like, like, you see, yeah, like, that's like, that's it's, a fact. You can't sit nowhere then. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fact. You know? But yeah, go. we jumping around. Go back to the first question. I feel like Kevin Hart was number one. Mm. Uh, this is going to sound corny, but y'all number two for sure. Yes. For sure. Okay. Uh, okay. And then Mr. Beast was number three. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I want to be Mr. Beast. Wow, we're, dude, we're up yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Beast? Yeah, Mr. Beast. Yeah, Mr. Beast before Mr. Beast is yeah. tough. Yeah. That's, That's tough. He, That's I'm tough. telling you, he's one of the, the <laughs> tallest people. I didn't, Again, speaking of height, I didn't think he was that tall. Yeah. Mr. Beast like 6'4". Really? 6'3". Yeah, he big. All and everybody hang out with him like that. Yeah. Like Chandler, that big. All of his friends, that big. Like I walked in and I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I That's thought I was about to NBA tryout. What the fuck? <laughs> and yeah. they all like that. And it, yeah. I, honestly, he wanted to like most like what you see is what you get kind of people. Mm-hmm. Right. And I pride myself on being like that. I'm authentic. Authenticity is the biggest for me. For sure. Like I'm exactly who you think I am. For sure. Like and if you think I'm anything different, I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just be chilling and eating food, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like as you see my wife with me, my wife go everywhere with me. Yeah, like yeah. people be thinking I'm playing. Beautiful. I'm dead serious. Yeah, like my beautiful. whole team is just my family. It's literally just my wife, my sister. Mm-hmm. We got a manager and we got a lawyer. And that's it. And that's then my mom in law, my mom and my dad. That's right. the that's best it. way to keep it. Keep yeah. the business yeah. within the family, man. Tight. And my cousin, she's our stylist, so she do all. Yeah, of I seen that. Yeah. She had y'all fly for the BET yeah. Awards. Yeah. Oh, what was that like? What was the BET Awards like? Was that Different. your first like major carpet or something that yes. you did? Ooh. Absolutely. So everything really started. Why y'all just do that in sync? We do a lot. Dude, honestly, <laughs> honestly, yeah, yeah. there's a whole there's a whole clip of us like like both putting our things like this. I thought I missed something. I'm like, y'all didn't give me a drink to go grab at the same time. You want anything or you want no, water? No, right. you good. <laughs> but the BT words was dope. It was like it was surreal. So when we first got there, so in my mind, I'm not an influencer. I'm not a content creator. I'm literally just a dude who eat food. Mm-hmm. So when I get put in positions, I swear to God, and I, I be dead serious when I be telling people that. Yeah. And when I get put in positions where the perspective is different and I see everybody else's perspective of me, it's shell shocking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I literally got there and uh, when we first walked up, we was like, we, we got invited by Instagram. So we was with like six different other creators. And when we, we was the first people to walk on the carpet. And all of the lights turned on, and everybody started screaming. And I was like, "Who they screaming for?" <laughs> I was looking behind me. I'm like, "It's somebody." What is that? They <laughs> I swear, when we got on the carpet, it was like this way, this way, this way. Come over here, Miss. And I was just was like, "Yeah." I was looking at my wife like, "What?" And you realized doing, it was bro? for you. Like, what was I that like? What are we doing? It was. It was. I pray a lot. So I just while I was taking pictures, I wasn't even there. I zoned mm-hmm. out quick. Mm-hmm. Like the second that I, I get in a position like that, in my head I'm praying, but. Outside, I'm smiling and taking yeah, pictures. And all that. You wouldn't know what I was thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> but we ended up doing like, I think it was like 30 press media interviews. And I just was like, yeah. what? It's wild, right? Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. OD. Crazy. I mean, honestly, we get like Crazy. that sometimes too. And like, because we be on some normal shit. Like Absolutely. when we're filming. Absolutely. We're just, everyone on set just is with you every day. I literally so. had an outfit specifically planned out for this in my bag. That's why I went to the bathroom. Really? And I didn't put it on because I was like, they just chilling. I literally texted my wife and I was like, what? I'm nah, fine. about to be extra. They chilling. And, my, chilling. and my wife style, I mean, my uh, cousin Your styled cousin? me. Damn. And I was like, I'm not even going to put it on. I'm like, it ain't even, it's literally like a, it's like a denim shirt and some like denim uh, cream pants to match the shine clivers. No, that would have been like, tough, dude. Know, London Brown came in here last episode with a top hat and sunglasses on. <laughs> and a leather like, jacket. Jesus, London, <laughs> relax. And a leather jacket. I'm like, <laughs> this is more my vibe anyway. On yeah, a daily basis, what I be having yeah. on is jogging pants and t-shirts. Yeah, like, this is more man, my I like vibe. Being cozy too. But, but super cozy, bro. I be chilling. Yeah, it's weird because we, like when we're filming, we're just around like normalcy all day mm-hmm. long. And, that, and then, then we'll go do like a hosting on a Saturday and mm-hmm. same thing. People be like, Screaming and like, bro, people was crying. It's crazy. I like, yeah, yeah. Like, I can only imagine how you feel. <laughs> yeah. do, Yo. you, do people be yelling Tyreek every time yeah. you go outside? Uh, <laughs> no, it's so crazy. Like, like in the early stages, like, 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 like the original power, like season three, like where like Tariq started, like kind of getting like, like bad, and mm-hmm, everyone started mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. fucking with him and mm-hmm. stuff. 
yo, like like the amount of Tariqs I would hear every time I stepped out on the street, I would literally just start turning over my shoulder. Like I thought he name. was a real person. <laughs> I thought he was a real person. I, I'm gonna be 100 percent candid. I don't really watch TV like that. Right. My wife is a power fanatic. Right. Like quick quick story about how solid he is as a person. So he reached out to me and he basically just commented and it was like, I love what y'all doing, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, that's fire. And I literally ran to my wife and I was like, bro, Tyreek is commenting on our video. <laughs> and she was like, you lying. I swear to God, she didn't believe me. And I was like, no, I promise you, I saw her and she just started freaking out. So in my mind, I was like, it would be so dope to have an interaction with y'all. But I never thought it was going to be the interaction that it was. So I basically hit Michael up and I was like, bro, my wife love y'all. Like, it would be super dope if we could just FaceTime for two seconds. And he was like, what? I'm on lunch in 10 minutes. <laughs> and I swear, the whole time I was trying to keep it a secret from her. And I was like, he's not about to really FaceTime me. I'm not even going to tell her. So, he on, <laughs> so I don't even get her hopes up. FaceTime me within like, it wasn't even 10 minutes, bro. I was going to get food. And by the time I went and got in the car, he already was texting me. But literally, I was like, I'm not going to tell her nothing. Just talk to me like you my cousin or something. We just going to walk around the house. I was walking around the house and she was like, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> she, was like, she was like, bro, who is that? And she took the phone and literally stuff like that makes my day because mm. my wife is one of the most important people in my in my entire life mm. next to my kids, God, and my, my mom and dad. So for that... Salute, bro. Love, bro. I told you, I'm I was so like that. that then that you, once you ask for the too, podcast, bro. I was like, this easy, whatever yeah. you want, bro. I'm there. <laughs> whatever you. I didn't turn so many. This is the only second podcast I've ever done. Really? I've turned so many opportunities down, and so because again, I'm a man of God, and I feel like I'm only gonna be where I'm supposed to be at. Right, 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 I don't right. do nothing for opportunity. I don't do nothing for money. I don't do nothing for right. the name, for the accolades. I do it off of vibes and off energy. Right. And you doing that, I was like, oh yeah, whatever you want, bro. That's love. And I was like, I'll be on the plane tomorrow. Yeah, whatever you want, bro. I I think I think it shows in like what you the stuff that you create sure. it shows sure. like that's how you operate you don't operate uh, you know because a, a lot of times people can go left or go right because that's they get certain amount of that's bread or they get this that and you just have stayed true to what you do when i say i be eating food i mean it like, i don't <laughs> shoot content i don't shoot videos i literally so my daily routine is i wake up i kiss my wife i kiss my kids i see what they doing i see if my wife got anything on the schedule if she don't i'm like okay i'm about to go get food what you want we go on yelp or we go on tiktok or we go on instagram and we find something I go, I record the first couple bites, and I go eat food. I literally just go eat it and then turn the camera off and go watch TV. Wait, I actually have a question. The so, Paw Patrol chair. I, 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 I used to I used to work for uh, Theo Vaughn, the comedian, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and we had Chris mm -hmm. Hansen. He's hilarious, bro. He's so funny. Yeah, he's hilarious. And we had Chris Hansen on the podcast, mm -hmm. and he came into the podcast Chris studio. Chris Hansen is the, uh, the catches, How to Catch a Predator dude. Yeah, yes, How to yes, Catch yes, a Predator. Yes, yes, yes. And he came into the podcast studio, uh -huh. and and the elevator dinged open. It was a it was like a business center with like a bunch of different uh -huh. offices, and it opened, and everyone saw Chris Hansen and went. <laughs> you thought you was in trouble? Everyone, everyone was like looking around. So when you walk what? into a restaurant, are they like, oh, are they like panicking? Yeah. They're, like, they're like, damn, we gotta get on our game. I feel like that's how <laughs> fucking funny that is. Everybody looking to see who the predator is. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, he's like, nah, I'm just, I'm just here to, to do an I'm interview. Just here to chill, yeah. yeah we're yeah. not catching nobody no, today. <laughs> how about the one guy that no, is? He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> that's Imagine OG. the guilty consciousness. Yeah. Everybody like, yeah. everybody in there like, shit. Yeah, for me. For me? How funny would it be? If I mean, not funny. Somebody telling themselves. Right. Yeah, someone's like, all right, fuck. I got it. You got it, bro. Like, you going to start <laughs> running out of nowhere. Let me just turn myself in. Nah. That's, no, that's OD. Uh, yeah, I feel like, so, especially when it comes to restaurants, that's why I specifically don't go sit nowhere. And if I do go sit anywhere, I have family with me or right. I got my wife with me. I don't, you will never see me in public by myself sitting down nowhere. Right. No. Even before I was doing food reviews or even before it took off the way it did, uh, I'm very socially, like, if my circle not with me, I'm very socially, I'm not even going to say awkward. I'm just, I just get, I get anxious real fast. Right. So yeah. if my people not with me, so I, I call my, my sister and my wife my charger pads. If they not with me to charge my social battery, it die immediately. Like, I can go outside and I have four or five interactions and I'm ready to go to the After that's over. Oh, yeah. what? I'm, I'm like that to too. To Unless my people is with me, I'm really like that. I'm like, all right, I'm done I can stay out forever if they with me. <laughs> yeah, I can stay yeah, out yeah. all night. If, but the second I walk into a restaurant and I get those stairs or I get that attention, oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, can I get that to go? Please? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Feeling weird, right? I'm like, right. And people ask me why I eat in the car. That's why I eat in the car. I, right. I never feel comfortable sitting in, and sitting in a restaurant and like, what it is, is more or less of like, one, it's the expectation. Right. It's like, you never want somebody to, to, expect a good review or you never want to i'm i'm blunt and i'm very brutally honest mm -hmm. so if i don't like you it don't i'm gonna tell you oh. yeah, yeah i'm gonna tell you even if you standing in front of me mm -hmm. like i've had uh instances where i've literally been like i don't want no free food i don't want no uh 
extra plates and people insist and I eat it and I don't like it and I'm mm-hmm. standing right in your face for how closer than where we are right now. And <laughs> like, this shit ain't good, bro. <laughs> to me, it ain't good. And what, and what do they say? Oh, but we would just make it. I'm like, no, I'm all right. Nah. <laughs> and yeah. it just makes it awkward. Yeah, it just makes it, it awkward. Weird, it's just yeah. weird. It's just like, I don't, I don't want to be no, I'm not an asshole by nature. So I don't want right. to be mean to nobody. It's like, but you're but again, honest, I'm keeping it honest. Right. I like, and, and I, I keep telling people, my taste buds are different than other people's taste buds. For sure. Just like your taste buds are different. Like one thing I like to do is, what's your favorite food? My favorite type of food? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I would say mm. Taiwanese food. If you go number Ooh, one. I never heard that before. Yeah. What's your favorite food? I would probably say... Jamaican or like Spanish food? Mm-hmm. What's your favorite food? I would say Italian. Yours? Japanese. Yours? Spanish. Yours? Mexican. Yours? I like burgers. <laughs> Dude, we the guy about, from Toronto we goes cuisine. I like burgers. We talk about cuisines, bro. What the I like fuck, burgers. Bro? I, like, I, like, I like turtles. I like turtles. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> I can't believe my videographer just embarrassed us like that. We talk about cuisines, well, bro. Says, in here. I like burgers. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, dude. So burgers would be American, maybe. <laughs> like he smiled when he said it too. He's like, burgers. I like burgers. <laughs> <laughs> no, Todd. Oh Bible. man, <laughs> no, that's hilarious. But I, I do that to 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 prove there's no one specific palate. Mm-hmm. Like just because you like a certain food and you like a certain food, if you was to try that, because that his favorite food is something different, he not gonna like it the same way you like it. So it's is very important to remember like just because i don't like some food don't mean that you won't like it it's like i asked 10 different people and we got all 10 different answers so it's it's one of those things where i be trying to tell people like i'm a normal person and like when i tell you if i go in with my own face or my own name i get 30 bags of food uh, 30 bags it'd be just, so overwhelming man. it's like so what do you bad. what do i do with all this see because I, I feel like see now we about to get into the nitty-gritty i feel like that's why i don't consider myself an influencer or a foodie or i mean a food influencer or, or a social media or any of that because a lot of I, i'm in my own lane i don't have no competition no no nothing but a lot of people who do that charge for their promos and they charge for promotion and they charge for food reviews I don't do that, right. uh, and I specifically don't do that because I know these mom and pop shops are trying to survive. They ain't trying to profit, uh, and a lot of times when you hear those stories, I'm an empath, so when I be like listening to it, I really take it to heart. Uh, a lot of times you hear those stories, it literally be like, I'm just trying to make enough to where I don't close next month type thing, uh, and people be taking their marketing budget, or they be taking a, they rent for a marketing budget, and it's like, I never would do that, yeah. so I, I be trying to tell people, like, I'm not a food influencer at all. Like I just, I don't charge. I don't want no extra food. I don't want none of that because you just want I, to be good. I don't want no expectations on me when I go in there. Because if you give me 30 plates of food and like I said, you trying to survive, that is cutting into you eating at night or right. your kids eating at night. And I don't think a lot of people think that deep. Right. But it's like I that's cutting into what you do as a as a person. So it's like I wanna pay for my food. I wanna try the food. And if God willingly is supposed to bring a lot of business, it's gonna do that. Right. And I've just been blessed enough to wear if I really like a spot, it might be anywhere from like an hour to four hour wait time. And it's like, that's all in God's hands. Right. And I just know if I move how I want to move, then everything will happen the way it's supposed to. Right. For sure. Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Chef Gianni. My name is Chef Mikael Myers. Wow, he's being a little uppity with it. Um... I'm a HelloFresh expert at this point, yeah. so I go by Chef now, and now I want my name when the crew has to start to say Chef Gianni Paolo host. I'm not gonna lie, I think I need that title too, yeah. bro. I've been switching it up, like I've been taking like ingredients from one like one dish and then like putting it in the other dish, and I'm like doing like a little Whoa. something something. You're going against the grain, huh? Now you know, I'm mixing the flavors. But that's the best and I'm part. I'm creating new ones. Right, that's the best part is they give you all the ingredients. They give you, you everything you need, and then you could just. <laughs> Bro, honestly, I think I've saved probably like five, ten bands this month just by not going out to dinner with girls, just by cooking at home. I think I think I might have done the same thing. Listen, I'm honestly terrible at grocery shopping, bro. I'll probably leave the supermarket with three hundred dollars worth of like candy, cookies, and juice and all type of nonsense that I don't. I've like. seen it. I've seen it. But here's the thing about HelloFresh: they deliver farm fresh ingredients right to your table within seven days. Yep, they've been keeping me, keeping me right. Sorry about that Ray that was just on Michael just there. We're exhausted from podcasting all day long, and you want to know why I am so happy is because 
I don't have to go to the store right now and go pick up groceries. We've been working all day long. You know what's going to happen? I'm going to go home. My HelloFresh is going to be sitting there waiting for me. I'm going to look at the entire ingredients, the whole thing, and I'm going to cook it. It's going to be beautiful. Every week, it's a list of 40 different recipes. You'll never get bored, bro. you got so much to try. When you need dinner fast, and boy, I am hungry, I need it. Do not think delivery, think Hello Fresh. You know, there's no service fees, there's no all this BS that's added on to it. It doesn't, oh, well, did you drop it here? Hello Fresh right to your door. The fast and fresh recipes are ready in just, what, 15 minutes? 15 minutes. And it's 25% cheaper than takeout. <sighs> Listen, go to HelloFresh.com slash Crew50. Use the promo code Crew50 as well. And get 50% off. And free shipping. And free shipping. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Crew50. Use the code Crew50 and get 50% off. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Back to the episode. <laughs> Are there any, like, uh, restaurants in the world that you want to try? Is there, like, anything specifically out there? It's this place in New York. It's, I went, uh, so I did Good Morning America in, like, January, I think it was. And it was, like, a croissant. But it was huge. It's like a circle croissant. You know what I'm talking about? Is it Levain? Le, is it Levain? It might be Levain. It's like they it's like only, a cookie shop? Yeah, it's like a cookie shop, yeah. but they only put it out at like 12 p.m. Oh, or something like that. Oh, I know like what that. you're talking about. Yeah, and you like got to come and get it immediately. Yeah. yeah. It's like a huge, it's like literally like this big, bro. It's like a huge What's circular croissant. I don't know, but I've seen it on TikTok. Yeah. yeah. Bro, they made that shit look so good. Yeah. I got to go try it. Yeah, yeah, that shit looks so good. That sounds yeah. crazy. It's huge. It's like literally like, like a big dome. And it's like layers of like croissant and like some of them filled with chocolate or. All right, we gotta make that. Yeah, sure. we yeah, gotta right. yeah, good. Yeah. But it, like I heard, it's like they only drop it at certain times of day, they and you got to get it within like that first like. It's you like got to either be in line. Be in line. Like I went and I missed it, and I was sick. Damn. Yeah, yeah, was sick. The croissant app, you're like, damn, I didn't get these ones. Next time, we get them. But yeah, I feel like that's for show number one. I really want to go to Africa and try like genuine African food. Like, I've had African food, of course, but I think it's different when you want a motherland and yeah, you're trying to sure. like there. I ain't gonna lie, though. Fire? There's this lady that be cooking African food by my crib in Staten Island. She real true. Oh, African. New York is different. She, yeah, yeah, bro, yeah, she New York is different. Bro, I tell you, yeah, like, yeah. that shit is like she go to Africa, go get that shit, bring it back. Like, the way she makes it, bro, I'm telling That's you, fire. I get that at least twice a week. That's, twice we only got week. one real good African spot. It's called Calabash, mm. uh, African Kitchen. It's in Vegas. Yes. Fire. That's my wife's favorite place, bro. Fire. Yes, bro. I ain't it's gonna like, lie. When I, I go to Vegas, food. I'm right. I'm just going on y'all on y'all TikTok. I'm just going to all the. I be trying to tell people how much everywhere. that mean to me. It be I'm people like you. when we be outside. Like at this point, I think we take like, I would say anywhere from fifty to a hundred pictures anytime we go outside, <sighs> depending on where we going. Damn. Um, but I out of those fifty people, I would say like twenty of them be on Keith Lee food tours, yeah. and I be telling people like that mean the world to me, bro. Yeah. For you to specifically like get up and I don't know nobody in this world I would get and fly specifically <laughs> yeah. to do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like for you to get up and fly to somewhere just specifically to try food that I, yeah, that should so, be yeah, intangible, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, what was like, what was the like, what made you start the the food reviews? Like, you always been a foodie. Like, you always been a foodie. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were you were uh, you fought in Bellator right before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so like, I said, I've been a foodie my whole life. Uh, I fought again. Why the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's twice. <laughs> Yo, that's so weird. Did they do that often? <laughs> Did they do it often? He talking about we finish. We, we a lot of times we finish each other's <laughs> like questions and shit. Like yeah, that. I, I thought he was gonna say, say sentences, sentences, but it's all good. <laughs> I, he just ruined the clip. He I just wanted to freak him out. <laughs> <laughs> he just saw the clip. <laughs> I was I was a little lost in that when I go. <laughs> I didn't know no, you had an objective with that one. <laughs> that's fire. But no, I feel like, so I've been a foodie my entire life. Uh, I've been professionally fighting since I was 18. I'm 26 now. Well, I'll be 27 this year. Uh, so it's just one of those things where with fighting, and I wrestled since I was in the sixth grade. So with wrestling and fighting, you really got to maintain your weight and you got to focus on your weight. Uh, I've always been a pretty small guy, but I've always fought or wrestled at smaller weight classes. So when I start fighting, I fought at 125. And I used to walk around at like, 140-ish, 145, which is still a lot of weight, especially when you're that small. Uh, the smaller you are, the harder it is to cut that much weight because it's percentage-wise. Um, and then I moved up to 135, and I started walking around at like 165, 160-ish, uh, and now I'm at like 185. Damn. Solid. Yeah. Built like a brick house. <laughs> <laughs> People be asking me all the time how I stay in shape. I just be running. They be yeah. like, bro, you eat like that? And I let, 
it's because I've fought so long and wrestled so long that my body is just used to staying in shape. Right. And all I got to do is run. God willing, all I got to do is run and like just stay a little active. I yeah, I just, I, but I run a lot. I run like six miles, six and a half miles. At like a seven minute pace, seven thirty minute pace. He said that's what he yeah. has to do, bro. We went we went to Jamaica three years ago. Yeah. He did like maybe thirty push ups a day. Mm -hmm. By the end of the two three week trip, uh -huh. dude, he was wrecked. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I run five Genetics, miles. Bro. I'm in the gym, dude. Yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck you, bro. Genetics, bro. <laughs> People would be getting mad at me all the time because, like I said, I eat uh, and what you see me eating is really what I be eating. Right. So I eat like that all the time and. I've gained weight, but it don't look like I've gained weight. Right. Like, I ain't got no belly. I ain't big. Like, I still go outside and run. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, but, from two weeks ago, I done gained, like, 12 pounds. I was, like, a buck 64. I'm buck 78 now. But yeah, you hold it well. See, yeah. I feel like I'm one of the people that hold it. You never know I'm 185 unless I tell you. Yeah. You yeah, never know. You never Dude, if I have a head. french fry in the kitchen over there, mm -hmm. I have tits. Like, <laughs> one french fry, I got tits. I'm like, dude, I really got to pack it, dude. That I got fucked, suck, man. Bro. Like That must suck. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah, I, I said that to say, like, so I, I've been focused on my weight and focused on... The way you focus on weight is to focus on food. Right. And I fell in love with the art of food. Like cooking, um, Unwrapped it has always been one of my favorite shows. You remember, you know Unwrapped? Yeah. It's like they they go in behind the scenes of how things are made. Like they show you how Snicker bars are made, like Butterfingers and stuff like that. Uh, so I've always been in love with the art of cooking and the art of food. So uh, in December of 2022, I was, I was doing TikTok in like 2020, but specifically because I have social anxiety. So I was just trying to get used to being in front of the camera. So when I would do fighting interviews, I would be so awkward and so sweaty and clammy. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and it, it literally, when we was in the house, I was like, why not? Like, why not try to get better? Right. Like, that's, I've always been a, a realist and I've always looked at myself as like my biggest critic. So I would literally be looking in the mirror like, you're not doing nothing else. Like, my wife was pregnant with our first child and I was like, you're not doing nothing else. Why not get better at being you, basically. Uh, so I started doing TikTok in 2020. In 2022, we got reached out to by a, uh, People vs. Food, which is a YouTube channel, and they do food reviews. So I literally asked my wife in the kitchen. We had a two-bedroom, two-bath apartment, and we was paying like $1,000 a month. And I literally asked her, I was like, what do I post on my social media to make people not only come from their page, but actually come and follow? And we came to the agreement. We was like, we going to post one food review a day until we get on People vs. Food. So that was in like... I think that was in November, and we got on the show in December. And from November to December, we was at 1.4 million. We got to like 8 million by the time we got on People vs. Food. Uh, and by from December to now, I'm at almost 14 million. So with, within like a six-month span, we've gained almost like 12, 12.6, 12.7 million followers. What, what do you think it was that made people resonate with you specifically so much? Because there's millions bro. of people doing... God, I can't attest it to nothing else. Like you said, it's million people doing food reviews, and it's millions of people eating food. Mm, yeah. uh, I don't do nothing special. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no big editing. I don't have no team around me that like walk around me with a camera. I don't have no super HD camera. I got an iPhone, and I sit my phone on a water bottle, and I sit in my daughter's Paw Patrol chair. And that's literally where I started, and that's where I still do. Like now, uh, we just moved to a new house, so I'm building a sneaker room. So my right. sneaker room is where my Paw Patrol chair is. So that's the only reason I haven't been sitting in there. I've been sitting in the car because mm -hmm. my room is in development. Damn. But as soon as I'm right back in a Paw Patrol chair, as soon as I get a chance. They love that Paw, yeah. Paw Patrol chair. And the, and the craziest thing is like literally, <laughs> so the, re the reason I brought up the fact that we was in a two-bedroom, two-bath apartment is because I lost my contract with Bellator in 2021 of August. And I had no idea what I was going to do. Like I didn't have no money coming in. I didn't have no opportunities coming in. I was already doing TikTok, but it was like I said, I was at like maybe a million followers at the time. So I literally was just like, on my so I lost the contract like two weeks before my twenty fifth birthday, and on my twenty fifth birthday I was driving around in my car, and I swear to, it's gonna sound like I'm lying, but I swear I was driving around and I was like, what am I gonna do with my life? And a place called DB's Cajun Kitchen reached out to me and they was like, we would love for you to come try the food. And this is years before I started doing food reviews, and I literally looked in the mirror and I was like, am I gonna put my ego to the side and go do what I feel like I'm supposed to do, or am I gonna let the outside noise of oh you used to be a fighter but now you a tiktoker stop me from doing what i feel like i'm supposed to be doing and i literally got in the car drove did the full review nothing really came out of it but the confidence that i know that i put in myself that i'm trusting myself in that moment got me to where i'm at right now like i literally was like i'm about to do this shit and i don't give a fuck what nobody said dude i get goosebumps every episode bro like <laughs> damn it man, it was it really was one of the moments and and it was like one of them them pitchfork moments i like to call it because i could have stopped and just went back to the gym and only been a fighter mm -hmm. uh or i literally listened to myself and was like i don't because with professional fighting there's an ego attached to it for sure and 
in that space is so niche. It's so, but when you in it, you don't know it's niche. You think, I thought professional fighting was it. Like, I thought that's what I was going to do for the rest of my life. So when I finally, like, start to expand out of it, I realized, like, oh, this is a small community. But when you're in that small community, it feel like the world. The biggest, yeah, So yeah. I was literally in it, and I was like, everybody going to call me a loser. Everybody going to think I'm a loser. Like, I was like, bro, it, this was before TikTok was cool to do. This is before people was making a lot of money off of TikTok. Uh, and TikTok is just starting to become something that people are accepting as, like, the cool thing to do. Right. Like, back then, people was like, you about to do what? Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You was just in Bellator, like, <laughs> yeah. and I literally I got finished my last fight in Bellator, and they was posting that everywhere, like it was clips of me like getting choked out and me bleeding. So I literally had to put that to the side and was like, they're gonna talk about me anyway. Yeah, Either way, like, yeah, so, might yeah. as well go make this money. Yeah. <laughs> they gonna talk about you anyway. Whether you making the money or not, that's a fact. So go make <laughs> that's that. That's a fact. So, so was there like a pivotal moment where you saw it just started to pop off, and you're like, like, was there like a, a day you remember? So after the the um, first review I did was three hundred three food truck and it got like eight millions and eight million in twenty four hours. Was that was that the guy that's the, the guy that was in that food truck that was in the corner mm -hmm. thing and he was like I have no that's Mr Gary that yeah. was in like February so I'm gonna start back from December is or November is when I did my first food review and that was three hundred three food truck and they had a cheesecake sandwich and they posted about it and people was tagging me in it like it was it's two pieces of cheesecake that they take and they flip over like. So the crust is this way. They flip it this way, and they put, like, a raspberry or, like, a strawberry jam in the middle. And then they put the jam on top. So I saw it, and I was like, I'm just going to try it. Yeah. Love cheesecake. Not thinking much of it. I'm like, I'm just going to try it. Uh, I ate it and made a video. And within, like, I wouldn't even say, within, like, two hours, I started getting, like, blown up. And I'm like, again, I've been on social media for, like, two years at this time. So I'm not thinking nothing of it. I'm like, oh, it's just a video doing well. Uh but then I started getting blown up with people like going to go try it. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Not thinking much of it. I'm like, all right, that's dope. I wake up the next morning and the news reached out to me. And they like, we about to go to 303 Food Truck. Like, can you give us any recommendations? And I'm sitting there like, what? Who did you reach out to me for? me for? Who did you reach out to me for? And then they went and they start interviewing people. And the line was around the corner. So the 303 Food Truck is in the parking lot of a strip club. <laughs> and they was literally from the curb to where the strip club is around the corner. So, and they was interviewing people like, how'd you hear about it? Where you from? People like, oh, yeah, I'm from Canada. I saw this guy with, this is before people knew my name. I was like, I saw this guy with locks and this black dude. Yeah, he said this cheesecake sandwich was good. I'm here to try it. And every single person in line was saying that. So I literally went to my wife and I was showing her. I'm just geeking at the fact that people went to go try something that I, I've right. had. Uh and I'm just like, oh, this is dope. And it went to like a two-hour line, to a three-hour line, to a four-hour line. And I'm like, God damn. I'm like, what are we doing? Right, right. <laughs> but again, I'm still not thinking much of it. Like, I have bad imposter syndrome. So I'm just like, oh, they just yeah. dare because they dare kind right. of thing. Yeah. Um, and then I went to this place called Frankincense, which yeah. maybe like a month after. That was and where I really saw, like, that was Frankincense crazy. Frankincense was crazy, bro. I walked in and actually I got an email and they were saying that they was about to go out of business. And uh, it was the daughter of the owner. And she was like, this is my dad's dream. He's always wanted something like this. This is my dad's dream. He always wanted something like this. And he finally got it, but it's not doing well. Can you just come try the food? We don't want nothing from you. We just want to try the food. So I'm like, of course. And they was like, we reached out to multiple people and they tried to charge us anywhere from 7,500 to 10,000 to come do a video. And I'm like, well, I'm not about to charge you nothing. I'm just going to eat the food. Uh, so I went and I met the guy whose name is Frank. He's the owner. Uh, and he came out. He immediately, he had no idea who I was. His daughter didn't even tell him I was coming. Uh, and this was, I think I was at like, I was in December or so. I was at like four million maybe, uh, which is a lot of followers, but it's yeah. still not a lot for everybody in the city to know who you are kind right. of thing. Um, so I literally went and we had a full conversation. And he was like, bro, grab you a Gatorade out of there, offer me free stuff. And I just was like, why are you being so nice? <laughs> and he was like, that's just what I do kind of thing. Right. So I went and I literally got in a car. This is the story I never told before. I literally got in a car and I called my wife and I was like, this the one. I swear to God, she'll tell you I'm not like I caught her and I was like, this the one. I was like, I don't know where this is gonna take us, but if this food is good, this about to be huge. And I don't know why I felt like that. I don't know where it was coming from, but I posted it and it was at 10 million in 24 hours. And it literally went from them not having any customers for them, like literally about to close the doors, to now they got a section in their corner for travel. So when you get off the plane, you could take your luggage specifically there because it'd be people coming straight off the plane, straight there. That they've hired over sixty people. So that it's like is we've got we've deep, we've bro. been blessed enough to give over sixty people jobs in one VIP. spot. And I just was like, 
again, this is one of those things. I literally went back like two days yes. later, and I'm thinking I'm just about to go have a conversation with Frank. And I go, and it's around. When I say around the corner, it's like down the street. That is and I'm out. I, I got out the car like. <laughs> <laughs> I got out the car like. What? I was like, what is everybody here for? When I came in, it was empty. And I got out the car. Everybody, like, oh my God, it's Keith, it's Keith. <laughs> it's another Keith behind me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, what are everybody about? doing? <laughs> and I'm telling you, they was like screaming. I was taking pictures. And it, I was just, I literally got back in the car and I was like, this it. Yeah. I'm thinking that's the cap. I'm thinking like that's the the plateau. Oh, no, that's just that was, starting. That wasn't even the beginning, bro. Like I just it just one it was one of those feelings. Like I hugged Frank, he started crying. And again, I got in Boston syndrome, so he hugging me while he crying. And I'm sitting at you it's a video of me getting hugged by him and I'm a hug like <laughs> <laughs> with the most like bewildered look on my face because I legit didn't know how to process it. Right. Um and now even to this day, I feel like it it's just that's why I give God all the glory because I still don't know how to process it. Mm. Sitting here talking to y'all, it's like, bro, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it, like it's just one time. of those. It's just one of those things where it's like I just accept where I am now. Yeah. I'm starting to starting to learn how to accept it and be thankful for it and just appreciate where I am. Yeah, he's like, you guys sit back. Oh, this is life now, <laughs> and it'd be crazy. Yeah, I swear, I'd be telling her all the time, like. We just Craig and Day Day. We just Craig and Day Day, bro. I was I was about to be like that with my wife. One man. Day, man, if it's, me and my wife not like Craig and Day Day, man, it ain't gonna work. That's a fact. Yeah. It ain't gonna work, man. Listen, these streaming services they be violating. They be having y'all pay full price. And they're only giving out like, what, 65% of their catalog. It's like the ocean. You know how they say we've only ever explored like 4% of the ocean? Think of Netflix as the ocean and, and, and then basically not letting you see any of it. ExpressVPN got you covered, though. ExpressVPN got you covered. You can use a VPN that says you're in a certain location, and then you get to see all the titles from where that is. It's a game changer. Listen, our camera guy just told us he was trying to watch Mad Men last night. But he couldn't because, what, they took it off the, the U.S. servers yep. and now it's only on U.K. servers? Yep, they took it off U.S. Netflix. So we told him, download ExpressVPN, baby. They got you covered. You can literally just log in, ExpressVPN, and you can get access to all these titles that we don't have in the U.S. What you do is you log in to ExpressVPN. You pick whatever server you want to go to, U.K. You could be in Canada if you feel like you could be in. You could literally be anywhere in the world. Wherever you want to be, you log in. Pick wherever you want to be, and that's where you are. That's where your phone thinks you are, and you can watch whatever you want. Dude, it's like a mini vacation. Listen, I use ExpressVPN because it's literally the best VPN service out there. It's better than any, every other one. It has blazing fast speeds. I watch HD things without any buffering. Dude, I've literally seen you at the crib. you got everything going at once. Not a slip-up, not anything. It all works smoothly together. Yeah, bro, you know, everything is valid. And it's good on any device, phone, laptops, PS5, Xbox, smart TVs. You can use ExpressVPN on all of it. Listen, be smart. Stop paying full price for these streaming services while they're only giving you half of what they got. Get ExpressVPN. Get access to all of that. Go explore. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash crew pod. Don't forget to use my link, expressvpn.com slash crew pod. <laughs> Apparently, it's his link. I mean, you know our link. I our have link. my own link, too, okay? I'm going to be over here in Germany because I like the German girls. That's where my ExpressVPN is going to be. All right. That's fine. Yeah. Where's I'll yours going to gonna the be? UK. You're going to the UK? I'll be in the UK. All the UK girls love you anyways. Again, that is expressvpn.com slash crew pod. Get an extra three months. Go crazy and do what you please. I spit all over the microphone. I really did. But you know what? That's how passionate I am about German television. Back to the episode. <laughs> So it was 303, it was Frankincense, and then I went to Mr. Gary. And Mr. Gary is the one that you brought up. Uh, so quick story, I was literally, so I told you I work out a lot. So it was on a trip, and I used to ride my bike. We lived on the east side of, of Vegas, which is like by UNOV, which is kind of the hood. Uh, so I used to ride my bike from UNOV to the trip, and then I would go up and down the trip, and I would come back. So maybe like a 10 to 15 mile bike ride. Uh, and I was doing it at like 9, 11 o'clock, somewhere around, like late, basically. Um, and I was riding past the street that was kind of close to where we were staying at. And it was this random, like, I couldn't even tell what it was from the distance. It just was a bunch of lights, and it was like a box. And I was like, what? I was like, we in a hood. I'm like, what lights is this late? Yeah. <laughs> and it was like the neon lights, like the ones that you hang up, like people be having, like the TikTok lights. It was like one of those. So I was like, what is that? So I drove my, I rode my bike down a little bit, and I saw it was a food truck. And I'm like, oh, cool. I stopped, and I stared at it for a second. And I was like, 
hmm, why not go just try and make a video? Not thinking of uh, none of it again. Uh, I went to the, the place and it said seafood on the, uh, on the window and I'm allergic to shellfish. So I immediately was like, oh, I can't have none of this. And I went to turn around and the guy who was in the truck, it was only one person, his name was Mr. Gary. And he was like, where you going, where you going? And I was like, oh, I'm allergic to seafood, uh, shellfish, I can't have anything. And he was like, what? He was like, I'll clean the grill right now. Again, had no idea who I was, no inclination. He was like, bro, I'll clean the grill right now. I'll give you whatever you want. He was like, I make burgers, I make fries, uh, I make catfish, you got catfish. And I was like, yeah, I can, but I can't have anything that touches the grill, that touches the grill is shellfish. And he was like, what? I'll clean all of this right now. And I was like, you're not about to do that for real. And he was like, how about this? You come back in the morning and I'll have everything completely prepped, completely ready for you. And whatever you want, you can have. And again, no idea who I am. I was like, why is this man being so nice? <laughs> right, right. So I literally wake up the next morning at 10 o'clock in the morning. I go straight there. First thing I did. And uh, he had a burger ready for me. He had fries ready for me. So I did uh, TikTok Live maybe like a week before that where this lady ma- name is Shirley. Her name is Beauty to the Streets on TikTok beautiful person she goes out and she uh hands out food on skid row uh so she came to vegas and did it so i did it with her and i did live and you know with live you get gifts so i ended up getting like 300 dollars worth of gifts so while i was at the food truck i told him i was like i'm gonna pay for the burger but i didn't tell him how much i was gonna pay and he only had cash at the time he didn't have like car he didn't have apple pay none of that so i cashed at him the 300 dollars that i got from the tiktok live and the first thing he said was bro you made a mistake and I said, who made a mistake? No, I didn't. <laughs> and he was like, bro, you made a mistake. And I was like, no, I didn't. And he came out, got out the truck. He thought I was scamming. Mm. <laughs> he immediately thought, I, he was like, I don't want none of this money. <laughs> he, was like, <laughs> he was like, whatever you like, doing. It, right? <laughs> he was like, just give me the $10 for the burger and leave me alone, basically. Because right, right. <laughs> uh, in his mind, he like, bro, I'm sitting in this food truck in this alley in a hood. Ain't nobody coming. We only getting one or two customers a day. And here you come giving me $300 yeah, for right. a burger. <laughs> At, especially after I seen you last night and you came and all I did was clean the grill. I was going to clean the grill anyway. Anyway, that's kind of how his mind was working. And I just was like, I feel like that's what I was supposed to do. So I gave you the, the money. Uh, and we had a conversation. I posted it. And they sent him $40,000 within 12 hours. Again, he called me and was like, what? He was like, Keith, what are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, it's not me, bro. Yeah. I kept trying to tell him. I was like, bro, it's not me. And he was like, are these people going to want this money back? Or am I going to have to send them something? <laughs> like, and I was like, no, that. bro. I was like, it just, like people something. just... I, I kept trying to explain it. I'm like, good people want to see other good people win. For sure. Uh, and it was just, uh, that, that was probably one of the most surreal moments because he was calling me panicking. Mm-hmm. This is a 50 year old man. He don't know nothing about nothing. <laughs> $40,000 like, just rolling in what? on your phone. And like, he like, he don't even know how to accept it. He called me and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I see this money, but what do I do? Do I accept it? And I was like, it's yours, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where is he now? And like, do you still talk to him? Like, I, uh, so me, and Mr. Gary, I would say me and him close friends. Yeah, uh, he cool people. I've been super busy, so I haven't been able to chop, chop it up with him like I want to. But he's still in the same spot. He took the forty thousand dollars. He upgraded his truck. Uh, he took care of, took care of his family. Uh, he has an elderly mom that still lives, uh, and he takes care of her. He takes care of his family. He takes care of his truck. Again, I, I feel like people like that, I'm supposed to meet. Right. And rooms like that, I'm supposed to For be sure. in. Like this, I'm supposed to be yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And I, I feel like it was just one of those moments. I don't know exactly what he did with it, but I'm just happy he was able to enjoy it mm-hmm. and whatever he did with it. And he mm-hmm. gets a lot of business now because people obviously have seen the video. He's still in the hood, so a lot of people don't want to come to the hood. Right. Right. <laughs> but the ones that know, know. Though. Right, the yeah, ones yeah. that know, know kind of thing. Right. Like yeah, yeah, It's yeah. still one of those things where it's not like booming, it's not like out the door, right. but it's... I think people are aware of it mm-hmm. and they like, bro, I'm not going to the hood if I don't have to kind right. of thing. Right. It's, and when I say it's in the hood, it's in the hood. Yeah. So that yeah. feeling of like like being able to change somebody's life and business mm-hmm. with one video, like what is that? Like how do you like how do you just walk around knowing you can just be like, yeah, bro. I'm about to change your life with one video? <laughs> like, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Uh, God, he's and- such a good dude. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> just go to one strip club. <laughs> <laughs> She over there like hell no. She over there like hell no. She like don't give him no fucking idea. No, like, there has to be a vice. That's hilarious. Man, it's funny because people say that to me all the time. I don't go out to clubs. I don't. I don't do strip clubs. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I literally just be in the house with my wife. But the thing, I've, I haven't always been like this. So I'm thankful to be in a position where I'm at yeah. peace. Mm-hmm. Like I was when I was young, I was trying to figure out where I was gonna go. I was at clubs, I was doing all of that, but I never was a club body. I never was an outdoor person. So what it was for me was finding the right person. Right. Like once I found the right person, and it's amazing when you could be alone with somebody. 
Like, I feel like that's invaluable. Like, when I can be at home and still be with somebody, but still be feel like I'm by myself. Like, we can be in the same room, and we ain't got to say a word to yes, each other. Yes, that's as the long best. As you hear, that bro, is the best. What? That's how we you ain't got to say a word to each other. As long as you hear, I'm cool. As long so as it's like, is felt. That's my vice. My vice is staying with them. Yeah. And <laughs> I wish that was my fucking <laughs> vice, man. Damn, life would be so much better. <laughs> Who did you kill, man? <laughs> I don't buy it. No, <laughs> but so that's one thing I always tell people. I never embody perfection. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm not a testament of perfection. I'm a testament of not quitting. Like that's mm-hmm. literally my life story. Is no matter how many times I've got knocked down, no matter how many times I've got put in positions where I didn't know where I was gonna go, I prayed about it, and I'm here where I'm supposed to be. Damn, bro. Resilient. 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 But I feel like what it, the, to answer the question of, of how it feels to have that power or to have that, like, you know you could change somebody's life. Mm. Again, I got imposter syndrome, so I don't be feeling like that, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't. And, and I, I never tell people that that could happen because you never know. It, it's been spots that I've been to where it's, like, so niche that mm-hmm. a couple people go, but then it's been spots that I don't really think about. And then, like I said, it's a four-hour yeah, wait time. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And even in New York, I went to Cuts and Slices. Yeah. I still haven't been there. Cuts and Slices is crazy. Bro, Shout out was that the one with like the oxtail pizza? Yeah, 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 pizza it's so good. Pizza, everything, it's, but again, that's one of the things I never in a million years thought it would do anything from. I literally went because I saw it on TikTok. Uh, I was, I think that was when I was doing Good Morning America. So Good Morning America had me doing like a recon mission. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one thing about me is I've always been very, like I said, authentic, authenticity is the biggest for me. So they reached out to me and they was like, we want you to come to New York and we want you to try a restaurant and we want you to do a review on, uh, on air basically. And I told him, I was like, I'm not doing nothing before I come out there and actually try the restaurant. Because right. what you can't do is give me a restaurant the same day and then put the cameras in my face and then expect me to be like, oh, this is so good. Right, 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 come yeah. try this, everybody. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If it's nasty, I'm going to tell you on Good Morning America with the owner sitting next right, to me. And yeah, it's going to be awkward for everybody. Right. <laughs> so I literally told him, I was like, you got to put me on a recon mission. So they flew me out there. Uh, I had a full 24 hours by myself. And again, I'm very in and out when I'm alone. Mm. Uh, and when I was there by myself, I went to like 30 different spots. Literally, like in one day, zooming. Was, zooming. I'm telling when I, I'm tell, he looks I don't like that. play, bro. <laughs> God, he's got everything. <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't play when I'm by myself. Yeah. I don't kick it. I don't really talk much. I'm very quiet. So when I was going to spots, I just was going in and out. Uh, and I went to cut the slices that day. And I again, I just thought I was about to be in and out. The line was already out the door. Right. So I'm standing in line. I think I stood in line for maybe like 20 minutes. And I'm very incognito when I'm in public by myself. Head down on my phone, not saying nothing to nobody. Nobody even recognizes me until I start talking, because mm-hmm. I feel like my voice is more recognizable yeah, than my face. Stay, it's a very, it's very distinct. <laughs> so somebody, so he's in line. I was in line for maybe like thirty minutes, and I finally made it inside. Because cuts and slices is a very like small area. It's like a boutique. It's like a boutique. Of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the line is out the door, and it's only maybe like twenty people can fit in at one time. So I finally became one of those twenty people, and I'm standing in line, and again made it. Throughout the whole time, nobody said nothing to me. I wasn't saying nothing to nobody. Chilling. Everybody was enjoying themselves. I got in and somebody, I think he like bumped into somebody in front of him or something like that. And he was like, oh, excuse me. And I was like, no, no, you good. And as soon as I said that, everybody went. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. She's like, damn. I was like, oh, shit. Stay quiet. I was like, I was so good, bro. I was doing so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, literally, all I said was, you good. And everybody turned around. was like, And I started hearing, the, is that Keith? I think mm-hmm. that's Keith. Yeah. I like him. You start and seeing start, you feeling the yeah. eyes start then shifting. Then I start seeing people. So the, the thing that people do f- with me is they'll they'll start, they'll stare at me, then they'll start whispering, and then I'll see myself on people's phones. Yeah. Mm. That's what happens to me. I'll see people pull up the videos and be like, I swear that's him. Yep. And like just and people would be like, They'll be looking at like, him. So that started happening. And I was like, okay, my cover's blown. I was like, it it's is what it is. With. I started taking pictures of people. We started like just chilling and talking. So one, you had to take 50 right now. You know how that go. <laughs> and that's one thing about me is if I'm comfortable. I take pictures all all day. Right. Uh, like I said, I do have social anxiety, but when I'm by myself, as long as I'm around good people, right. and I pray a lot, so I feel like I can tell if I'm around good people. Right. So I literally was in there, we was chopping it up, everybody was cool. The owner saw me taking pictures, and he was like, oh, shit, that's Keith. So he came outside. After I ordered my pizza, he came outside with his phone in his hand already, and it was like, you got to tell me what it tastes like. Mm. So he literally put me on the spot, and I told him beforehand, I was like, I'm going to be honest, bro. I don't. I ain't gonna pull no punches. I don't mean no harm, but I'm gonna be honest. I tried it. I think I gave it like a nine point six mm. or nine 
nine point four, and I a, meant it. Yeah. That shit was gas. Mm. It was like a chili oxtail pizza. So it was like literally like just a slice of pizza with I don't even know, know what kind of cheese they use, but it's like a real stretchy cheese. Right. And it's like huge. When I say huge, like the piece is this big, huge chunks of oxtail, and they like super saucy, super juicy, and tender. And he just stole. And when I say he don't skimp, he throw them all over the pizza. <sighs> Bro, I telling you, I was like, yeah, I, I was like, bro, I'm so happy that this is good. <laughs> we out, right? So I ate it. He made the video. He posted. I didn't even post it on my page uh, until like maybe like two days later because Good Morning America told me not to tell nobody I was there. Basically, um, I signed an NDA and all that. You know how to go. Yeah. Uh, but he posted already, and within again, it's not even on my platform. Within him posting it, it got like four or five million views within a. 24 hours and yeah. I just was like bro, what are we doing I, I was like what are we? <laughs> people were sending me videos of like when I say the line was out already people were sending me videos of two hour lines three hour lines and like cars you know how small New York is yeah, when the yeah, streets yeah. cars was they like was double park double yeah. park triple <laughs> park <laughs> <laughs> taking up the whole things were block. standing on top of the hood and I just was like bro what are we doing <laughs> so like that was one of those moments where I just was like I never in a million years thought me going to eat some pizza spot in New York would draw that much attention or garner that much attention that that's one of the moments i just was like bro you say that was one of your be your favorite spots in new york i don't out of yeah, all the 30 you went show. to absolutely yeah. uh the place we ended up doing the segment on with good morning america was the uh bakery on bergen it was good all right thank god the, wait the so you had to tell them what you which one you could yes. do okay, yes cool. mm -hmm. so the only reason we couldn't do custom slices because it was already like a uh self-proclaimed right, 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 doing right, well right, 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 kind yeah, of yeah, shop trying uh, to get some like they was already the type thing. they was again they was out they the door booming. by the time they i booming, they right. didn't need no news presence if they had news presence nobody would be able to try to be right, <laughs> right, right, right. it's like the whole city would be <laughs> even after that i feel like they've had so many people come in that and on top of the food just being delicious and the customer service being great, they had so many people come in to where now you really gotta wait in a four hour wait, three Damn. hour wait. But yeah. it seemed like people don't mind. Like I've been seeing videos of people waiting for three hours and get the pizza and still be happy. Yeah. You know how good a slice That's of pizza tough. gotta be for you to wait, wait three hours three hour, and not bro. be mad? And you know us. And still want to eat the pizza after three you know hours. Us. I'm gonna be done. I'm like, bro, I don't even want this shit. Right, my, 20, 20 my head's minutes. not gonna be down in that line. I'm gonna be playing Big Rich Town. Like, <laughs> yo, let me just get an option. Like, this is all I need. Let me get up out of here real quick. <laughs> no, that's a fact. Yo. That's a fact. But I feel like you know us as black people. We wait 20 minutes and you yeah, start so hearing you that. You start like, getting antsy. Like, you just hear one person go, all right, dog. <laughs> <laughs> or you hear one person go, man, this is crazy. Teeth. Or they're like, <laughs> they start oh, scratching their heads. They start scratching their heads. One person in line to go like, man, this is crazy. Yo, and then everybody everyone else, like, yeah, bro, this is crazy. crazy. <laughs> we all in the same way. Man, yo. But yeah, for, peace, for you to wait three hours for pizza and it still be fire, that, that is just a testament. That's yeah. just and they opened yes. a, a new location in Queens. So oh, they're not right. only in Brooklyn now, they about to open one in Queens. Better. Yeah, they open one in Queens, so it might be a little easier for them. They didn't outgrow that little hole in the wall. Yeah, that little, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that little yeah. spot they in for sure. Yeah. So moving forward, like what are your goals and aspirations, you know, on, on TikTok, not on TikTok, like career wise? Like, like what's next for you? I believe in God, bro. I'm going to be everywhere I'm supposed to be. I'm going to do everything I'm supposed to do. I'm going to be in every room I'm supposed to be in. Uh, and that's kind of how I move. I don't move with no intentions. Right. Uh, I don't think. Before I move, I pray about it and I let it be what it is. I don't know where I'm gonna be. I didn't know I was gonna be here. So I ain't gonna lie to you. I can't tell you what the next six months gonna look like. Because if you would have asked me in December, would I be sitting on this couch with y'all? I'd be like, man, the fuck? <laughs> like, like, what? If, if you would have told me I would have been at a friends and family only thing with Kevin Hart, I'd be like, I know that's cool. Man, it's fuck us. <laughs> Kevin Hart is sick. It was dope, bro. It was dope. Yeah. Like the amount of people that was Who else walking was there? Past, Who else was there? Uh, Morris Chestnut walked straight past my oh, wife, cool. and yeah. she was like, <laughs> "Damn!" And she was like, "I want to say something, but I don't want to be that." Because again, this is a real intimate space. Like everybody was just right. sitting and chilling. Uh, and she was like, "I don't want to be that person, but I want to say something right. to him." But the things about those those spaces, though, because mm -hmm. they're so intimate. If mm -hmm. you walk up to someone, they gonna see you and be like, "Oh yeah, you supposed to be here." Right, so right, right. right. Yeah, you feel and he, but he Morris was in and out. He literally mm -hmm. walked in, said, "Hey, the cave," and then did yeah. <laughs> in and out. And he looked exactly what you think he looked like. Yeah, <laughs> that's so fire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not just casually walking into the The craziest spot. thing about that whole party is Kevin Hart is exactly who you think Kevin Hart is. Mm. Like, it's one thing when... <laughs> so, with me, I, I don't pay attention to the love that I get. I pay attention to the way that people treat other people around me. Right. 
the people who you think that shouldn't be treated well, that's who I pay attention to. Mm-hmm. Like I pay attention to how you treat your server. I pay attention mm-hmm. to how you treat the person walking past or the the lady who you think don't have any kind of importance because right. the second you don't think I have importance, you're going to treat me like that. Sure. So that's kind of how I pay attention to people. So when I first met him, we met him at um, his restaurant opening. And if same deal, he called me and was like, I want you to come try this. And I told him on the phone, I was like, it's vegan food. I don't eat vegan food. You're going to be mad at me. Like, we had a full 20-minute conversation. And the way, I, again, I'm not a celebrity. I don't like celebrities. I don't like people who carry themselves as celebrities. Right, right, so right. he literally called me on the phone on his personal cell phone. That's how I like to handle people. Like, right. when you FaceTime my wife, I was like, okay, that's somebody I can hang out with. Mm-hmm. I don't like having to go through like the manager and the team. Right, right, right. Yeah, that shit weird. I hate like, that. Who, yeah, like yeah. what are we doing? Nigga, people, like, just call <laughs> yeah. my phone, bro. Yeah, you got your phone in your hand all right. the time, bro. Just use your phone. Uh, so he literally called me on the phone. We chopped it up, and I told him, "I'm like, I'm. I don't think I'm gonna like it. You gonna be mad at me." Yeah. <laughs> uh, but to my surprise, it was delicious. Damn. Shout out to Hard House. It was delicious, bro. Damn, like I, I went, I tried it. Food. We. Uh, it was like a chicken sandwich and some fries. And I'm gas. He got a, a vegan Oreo shake. You would not. Vegan if I gave Oreo it to you, shake? if I gave it to you, you would have no idea it was vegan. I promise. You. I could probably get down with a, like I a vegan shake. I don't I know do, about I the don't... vegan food though. I said the same thing. Mm-hmm. I said Until but the chicken it. sandwich it was good. Like I'm not gonna lie, it was one of those things where I was like, I'm not gonna like this because I don't like vegan food. Right. But the texture of it was. Good. I was about to say, I'm a texture like person. Mushy as shit. I'm a texture like... person. I can't eat anything you you can eat without teeth. So like uh, pudding, yeah, yeah. jello, avocado and shit. I can eat avocado as long as it's seasoned and it gotta be on something. Mm-hmm. I'm not just sticking a fork in an avocado. <laughs> 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 Nothing that, that you That's can mush around. Bro. Yeah. Uh so when I tried like I said, the shit was delicious, bro. See, I, here's the thing though, mm-hmm. I, I don't know because you did come today with a Ferrari that said mm-hmm. K Hart on the license plate. So <laughs> I don't know if this is a branded thing you guys got going on here. <laughs> I drove in a thirty dollar Uber. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I did see the K Hart <laughs> Ferrari in the back. <laughs> but no, I like to. I did that, and uh, we met, and he was talking to my family. We was chilling, and again, I don't take stuff like that at face value because I'm like, of course you gonna treat me like that. You right. supposed to treat me like right, that. Right, like right. we meeting for the first time. You are supposed to give me your first impression. So I just took it as it is. I'm like, oh, it's Kevin Hart. He had an event. It was dope. It was fun. But I didn't look at it like that's my friend kind right. of thing. I just like, oh, I met Kevin Hart. Uh, so he got invited to the friends and family thing. And that's when it changed. I was like, oh, no, this is my friend. Yeah. You know, this is my guy. Yeah. Like, so quick story. We're sitting down. And again, we're very introverted. Me and my wife was sitting in the corner. And uh, we walked over. And we was about to get food. And it was like, oh, oh, actually, her, uh, Lottie is his assistant. Lottie was like, Where, what are y'all doing? Come over here into his section. And I'm like, oh, cool. Not thinking nothing of it. Nobody was there. It was The section was completely empty. She took us over there. We had our food. We sat down. And we was the only two people in there. So I'm like, oh, it's his section, but ain't nobody over here kind of thing. Within five minutes, his wife walks in with her friends. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, here you go. So I immediately stuff. spoke to his wife. Uh, I'm big on respect. So I immediately spoke to his wife, spoke to the sisters. My, my wife spoke to him. And he walked in with all of his friends afterwards. And the first thing he do was immediately walk up to me and like, oh, I'm so happy you're here. I appreciate you taking your time out. And then we had the conversation about the jacket. And I <laughs> kept telling him he was small. We was cracking jokes <laughs> back and forth. Uh, and we were just sitting there chilling. Like, you, you would have thought that we'd been friends for like 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and in those kind of situations, I'm not used to being in them. So my first thought was like, as soon as his celebrity friends come around, we just going to be sitting in the corner kind of thing. And I already accepted that. And I was like, it is what it is. Um, that wasn't the case at all. Ludacris walked in, and the first thing he did was, hey, Keith, come over here, bro. Ludacris, this is Keith. I fuck with him the long way. He changing <laughs> the food game. He doing this. He doing that. He got this coming up. He going to be big. He going to be everywhere. And I'm sitting there staring at him, and Ludacris just like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's cool. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Luda. Yeah, I'm like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. And Luda talked like he rapping. So you literally, <laughs> like, oh, have, have you met Luda before? Yeah, yeah, he literally I met talked Luda, like yeah, he rapping. I met him a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he literally was, we was chopping it up, and then DC Young Fly was there. Desi Banks was there. Uh, like I said, Kevin's hard wife was there and he was just bigging me up to everybody in a circle. And I just was like, damn, mm. like this is crazy. Yeah, like that, that was one of those moments like where I was like, he really liked that. Yeah. Like it ain't no game, it ain't no gimmick, it ain't no show. He really for you to do that in front of Ludacris, like it's one mm. thing for you to do that when we just by ourselves. Mm. But for you to be like, no, he really him mm. in front of Ludacris, I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. tough. You gotta it's you that. gotta appreciate people like that, especially people at that like stature, like for sure. They don't gotta go out their way to do nothing. No, yeah. Not Nathan. That's for <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Do, would you ever want to do any acting or anything like that? Or that's not something that... You know what's funny? Uh, y'all know Marseille Martin? 
yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's somebody I consider a close friend. Oh, yeah. nice. uh, we sat and chopped it up a bunch of times. She's elite. It. She's doing her yeah. damn she thing, by the way. Direction. She's doing her yeah. damn thing. Yeah. Yeah. Direct all type of Shout out to my friend. We didn't sit and, and, and talked, and uh, me and my wife went to dinner with her and her mama, and we just chopped it up for maybe like three, four hours and mm-hmm. talking about that. Mm-hmm. Um, Fire. Yeah, fire. He got something fire. Got again, fire. again, I'm I'm gonna be everywhere I'm supposed to be. Right. Uh, I'm gonna right, do everything bro. I'm supposed to do. It's only uh, right, man. I, I think me and Kevin might have something in the pipeline, but nice. fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. Dude, hell. I'm just, again, I'm just excited to be here, bro. That's fire. Yeah, I'm That's just excited fire. to be here. Fire. Yeah, and you never know. I might be on power one day. Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah. Look. literally like, <laughs> yeah, we can make that happen. <laughs> Hey, don't we play. Can make that it's on camera now, so don't yeah. play. It's in the air now. He's like, you guys said it. You For gave real. me a word. It's in the air now. For so. real. Yeah. But again, something air. like that would just be, like I said, just surreal. And and I'm a student of the game. Whatever I do, I put my full. That's why I don't really like, that's why I don't say I'm an active fighter right now, right. because I'm so busy doing everything else. If I don't have the time to really, really do something, I'm not going to do it. I don't like playing like with nobody's fully craft, locked bro. In. Yeah, yeah. And that's why when I first started calling myself a food critic, I start moving like a food critic. That's why I don't tell nobody I'm coming. That's why I don't accept free food. That's why I don't take stuff from other than the fact that business is trying to survive. But that's why I don't take stuff from people. That's why I literally go in. By the time I do the review, I'm already gone. By the time you see the by the time you realize that I was there, I'm already in the car shooting a video. Yeah. And then by the time you try to come get my car, I'm already I'm gone. Already gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm already, already at the out. green. And the video posted <laughs> type I'm about to move like Drake. <laughs> yeah, bro, I be in and out, bro. <laughs> so, but it's one of those things where I take everything that I do serious. Right. So if I was to act, yeah, I feel like I'm him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm him, no, we bro. We gotta see Keith on the screen. Yeah, I'm man. him, we bro. See him on the screen, bro. <laughs> show. That'd That's be crazy. So tough. That's That'd crazy. Tough. Well, thank you so much for pulling up, this bro. This is one like, of the dopest things I did. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's I did so anything crazy. that I've I've done. This is one of the dopest things. I've and done. I say this one of one of my favorite episodes we had in a while. Too, for sure, stop I, it. I swear bro. to God, I swear to God, sure. yeah, I swear to God. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah, me yeah. too. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Bro, I got yeah, I got bad. goosebumps the whole episode. I almost started crying, dude. <laughs> and then I'm like, this guy might be a serial killer. He's too nice. <laughs> I went through like so many different things. <laughs> See, that's why I be telling people all the time because people will comment that or they'll say that like, bro, he's so nice. He's such a nice person. It's because of what I've been through, right? Like it's not sure. even. I, I'm not even gonna say I'm a nice guy. I'm just a guy with good intentions. Right. Mm. I just got pure intentions. I don't mean no harm to nobody. Right. I just be chilling. We need I more Keith Lee's in this world, dude. Man. I just be for chilling, sure. bro. <laughs> I feel like the way you can be a Keith Lee is being yourself, just mm. being authentic, just being who you are, not being ashamed of who you are, not being afraid of who you are. I don't give a damn what nobody think about me. Mm. I be yeah. moving. Mm-hmm. As you yeah. Damn, dude, this show is teaching me so much. Like, Young Jeezy came in here. I'm saving money now. Keith Lee came in here. I'm being a nice. I'm like, who has his changes? You know, you know, you know one of the coolest the rappers I ever met. Real mm. quick before we get out of here, you know one of the coolest rappers I, I ever met in my entire life. Who? Jada Kiss. Word. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, we're yeah, we're yeah. Tyler Jada. Yeah. What? We seen him in the airport a minute ago going yeah. to Atlanta. I met him at the BT Awards, and <laughs> I didn't talk to nobody at the BT mm. Awards. Like, when no no celebrities. Boosie was standing right behind me. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> Queen Nigel was, was standing crazy. in front of us, and I literally, I literally, <laughs> Boosie was why he was. Was he didn't like flip flop, bro? How was, <laughs> how was y'all not like, what the fuck? <laughs> and he right behind y'all, he was hanging off his. He was really like that, too. He was really and bugging So out, before bro. we went out to the show, we was like in like the backstage, like just chilling. And everybody was drinking. We just taking pictures, and he was really like that the whole time. I was like, I'm drunk as a skunk already. <laughs> he said, I'm drunker than a fish out of water with no leg. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he again, he one of them people where it's like it is you. It That's is him. what it is. Yeah. Exactly yeah. who you think he is. He like that. Right. But to 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 touch on a point, I didn't talk to nobody. I just was in there chilling. I was just happy to be there with my wife. And Jada's kid's sons walk. I mean, Jada kiss his son walked up to me, and he was like, "Bro, I love what you do." Uh, this that, and third, and as soon as he started talking, I was like, "You got to be related to Jada Kiss." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he looked and sound just like him, yeah. so I was like, "It got to." I didn't even know that Jada Kiss was there until I, until I saw his son. Um, and then it, his dad was over there, and he was like, "Bro, my dad would love to like just sit and chop it up with you." And I was like, "Jada Kiss?" Mm-hmm. I was like, "Are you lying?" <laughs> he walked up to me, the coolest dude I met. The man, mm-hmm. what he literally like one of the the coolest, the embody me, uh, the embody me in New York. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definition yeah. of New so York, New York. Yeah, like yeah. so New York. Yeah. <laughs> and the first thing I told him, I was like, "Bro, I used to play with you on Death Jam." <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, we said it to him too. I said it to Method Man. I was like, "Please, Fat Joe." Yeah, yeah, Fat Joe. Swear, bro. So just to have that interaction, I was like, I literally walked away from it, and I was like, he. One of the coolest dudes I've met so far. Mm-hmm. Easy, yeah. easy. Y'all yep. up there too.
too. Yeah, and I don't, that's I don't love. say that lightly. Like I'm one of the people. Again, if I, I didn't like this interaction, I, or this intera- interaction, I would just be like, oh, it's cool. Like yeah. when I first met Kevin Hart, I didn't walk away like, oh, you're my friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just was like, oh, okay, that was Kevin Hart. That's right. dope. But this interaction is dope. Hell yeah. yeah. I, t- I don't take that lightly either. That yeah. means a lot. For bro. sure, bro. Hell for yeah. sure. Yeah, like, Jada kissed. We were at the airport and he said, man, I can't even get in the studio. A power's not on, man. You guys give me inspiration. <laughs> and I looked at Michael. I was like, us? Yeah, yeah, I was like, crazy. us? My dumbass? <laughs> <laughs> I give you his I'm from New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but y'all seem like some of the coolest laid back dudes. How do y'all take that when man. you walk to y'all about power and about TV in general? I don't know, man. I just, I, I guess I have a little bit of imposter syndrome because I, like, I don't move like that. I don't think mm-hmm. I'm a celebrity. Mm-hmm. I don't act mm-hmm. like that. That's just, I, I literally just love this job. I say this every episode of the show. Yeah. I just literally, and now I get to work with my best friend every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, you can tell too. Yeah, Bro, yeah you can tell just ha- I just show yeah. up to work every day and I have so much fun. Yeah. I make the crew laugh. I come here. I just like, I just like to laugh and have I fun. That. So mm. that's why I do this job. I don't. I mean, that's the money's great. good. Don't of get me wrong. Yeah, that's 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 me wrong. Come I got the poor. I mean, all the time, yeah, it come yeah. with it. It come yeah. with it. it. Come with it's it. It's inevitable because because we work hard for what we do. Like just so, be so, yourself, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, that, that's one thing I've never chased money. I've never right. chased opportunities. Right. Yes, it come with it, and yes, it's great to be able to right. take care of your family and be able to do things and like be able to move the way you want to move. Right. It's dope, but I feel like it's only dope when you got your circle around you. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, it's different. I be trying to tell people it ain't dope to have it and be alone. Yeah, yeah. Now, it ain't cool to be on the mountain top by yourself, bro. Right. You gotta share like, shit with the family. It, it, it makes not only you look at life different, but it makes everybody else look at you different. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. It, that's a terrible feeling to be at the top of all the money and then your parents still struggling and your sister still struggling. Mm-hmm. And you like, yeah, we about to go to the, to the Maldives. And they like, what? Huh? I got a call of a work to go. To. I can't call of a work. Mm-hmm. And you sitting there yeah. like, what? You yeah. still got a job? And it, it that I think that's how easy it is for you to get like out of touch, out of touch, yeah. Yeah, out of touch, yeah, yeah, yeah. and out of touch reality. That's why you see a lot of celebrities be on during the pandemic. Everybody was like complaining that they was on a yacht and they, and their yacht was wasn't big. Enough. And I was like, bro, you're out of touch with fucking for reality. Sure, bro. There's people <laughs> like, they can't leave their they, crib. They, exactly, they yeah. can't leave the crib. Like they got family members dying, yeah. but you like, oh well, I just can't go to my submarine. Then my bad. Yeah. I, I, I hated, the, I hated the people being like, stay home. And then they're literally like their yeah, pool. Big ass, it's like yeah, a never ending pool. It's a fucking hills. infinite yeah. pool. I stay like, home, yeah, my nigga. Like, home. what do you mean? I'm like, bro, I, so live a, I live in a studio. <laughs> on the top of Malibu. Talking about this is so miserable. Yeah, right, yeah. He kicked up. 17 like, yeah, bedrooms. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> damn, no boo. They don't have they don't got the back section that's open right now. Damn. But I think what what keeps me away from that is being around my family. Yeah. Being around and I got a very, very strong woman next to me. She, she seems dope. Yeah. She'll call me out in a <laughs> heartbeat. Like... She'll call me out in a heartbeat. And that's why I, I keep I stay surrounded by people like that. I don't I've never been surrounded by yes men. Yes, man. You yeah. can't. Never. You can't. That's, can't. The, that's the quickest way to fall fall off and she'll and in a heartbeat be like, bro, you're corny. <laughs> Everybody be like, oh Keith is so amazing, you're so nice. And I get home and she's like, bro, you're corny. Like, <laughs> and it just keeps you, it just keeps you like Wait, that grounded. Balance, you need that yeah, you, you need, need it. That balance. You need it. Cause I feel like if you don't, you get dragged into that, you get one thing I it's always say, I never listen to the negative or I never listen to the positive. I just stay grounded. I just stay in the middle because people will build you up to tear you down, right. especially with social media. People will make you seem like this most untouchable, amazing. Like you said, people think you a serial killer because you're so great right, and you're right. so good. It's like people will build you up to this like untouchable figure. And then when they notice that you're human, they'll use that to tear you down. They'll be like, hold on. For sure. and so that's why I don't personally take none of it to heart. That's why me. I the only the only criticism I take to heart is the criticism that come from my family. That's I, a fact. Because those are people that really I, care yeah, about. Because yeah. I know they care. Like that's the only. If they the build you up, it's for a reason. Yeah. Like if if it's been a few, it's only been like a handful of times. My wife has come to me like, you him. Mm-hmm. And those moments, I'd be mean, like, oh yeah, I know. I it. Yeah, that. okay, yes. I earned that. Yeah, I earned that. <laughs> it took me a minute yeah. to get there, so I yeah. earned it. But it's like you you get people that say it on social media all the time. And again, it, and it just I feel like, like the, the only healthy thing. way to do it is to go in one ear, out the other. It's like mm-hmm. I appreciate it. I, I do take it to heart. But I well, I appreciate it, but I don't take it to heart. Mm-hmm. It's like because I feel like the second you take the positive to heart, you gotta take the negative to heart too. Cause the second people start telling you that you ain't shit and that you ain't somebody and you ain't that, you gotta take that. Yeah. And that's why me not being a celebrity, if you don't, if you tell me I'm not a celebrity, okay, all right, <laughs> I already knew that. <laughs> right, right, right. You can't put me in a situation to humble me because right. I already know that. I'm like, like I'm humble. chilling, yeah, I'm yeah, humble. I'm chilling. It's like you can't put me in a situation because I feel like a lot of people's identities get attached to that. A lot mm-hmm. of people be like, oh well, yeah. I'm a celebrity or I'm this or I'm that and then you get put in those positions where you go to a war show and they put you on a nosebleeds mm-hmm. and they don't and give you no tickets they only give you one ticket and you sitting there by yourself and now you feeling like 
diminished. Yeah. You can't diminish now nothing. Now your ego blemish. Yeah, now like your ego mom. hit. <laughs> yeah, you can't de- blemish nothing on me. I be chilling. Yeah, literally. Yeah, I be chilling. Damn, that's Take right. whatever comes. Okay, well, you know what? Fuck Makai and Chris Lofton. This is coming out right after Joey Badass. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Makai. This was a fire, fire episode, bro. My I learned fire. a lot. Bro, you are one of the nicest people I've ever I met in my entire life. But bro. it's genuine. It's yeah, not yeah, from, like it's genuine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just can't wait to see like what we do together moving forward, whatever. You, Anything yeah. and just your career on I your own, bro. Too. Like 50, what up? Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, look. 50 the yeah. man, bro. Man. 50 the man. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, 50, what up? We're going to set that up. And now nah, we're going to work um, for sure. Uh, Mary does has shows in Vegas. I would love to meet Mary. We're going to hit one. We're going to hit one. We're going to hit a show. When I it's tell quiet. you, you're there. Yeah, we're going to hit Consider show. yourself. Consider yourself there. When I, I, I tell gonna go. you, we're going to go. Oh, I, I miss somebody on my list of who I want to meet. Mm-hmm. Rihanna and ASAP Rocky. Yeah. He's, like, he's like, wait, now that I know you got talking? some juice. <laughs> he's like, do you know Rihanna yeah, We can do power. We can do like, 50 Cent. We can do Mary. <laughs> I bet. I was like, all right, let's talk it in this. Yeah. I, I want to meet we Kevin Hart. So this is the yeah. fucking choice. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, Thank you, bro. I appreciate you pulling up and coming Honor, here bro. and showing Honor. some love. Um, you got, you have anything to plug? Like any, your TikTok, all that stuff? TikTok is Keith underscore Lee 125. If you want to follow, I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all. Like this I don't want you to ever underestimate what this means to me. Yeah. It's fire. That's bro, you're past gonna make, anything, yo, past fuck, yo. any opportunity that come out of this, past any meeting anybody, just being here. Y'all don't know what, what this do do for me. That's Mentally, love, what this do for me going forward. Yeah, love, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad we could yeah, make that happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's fire. Good. That's super fire. We got each other like that's nine that. times yeah, this interview. Listen, that's how you know you're having a real that's conversation, a fact. though. That's like, a fact. That's certain a fact. words call for the death of you. God is amazing, like, bro. <laughs> get like that. Sometimes. God is amazing. I appreciate Mike. y'all. Uh, before we head out, yeah. where's 22 on TikTok? Where's 22 on Instagram? Michael Rainey Jr. on Instagram, if you want to go like the little professional side of me. Where's 22? I'm like a little more funny, you feel me? <laughs> but um, where's 22 on YouTube? We got vlogs. And um, yeah, we out here going crazy. You know how we do. Uh, Gianni V. Paolo, Instagram, TikTok, Gianni Vlogs coming out on YouTube, uh, weekly, and yeah, follow Keith, man. Keith. Yeah, follow Keith. He's changing people's lives one video at a time, and that's what we're doing, baby. We're yeah. spreading the love, spreading the blessings, man. Well, Thank Mike you, just Keith. We're going crazy. We're going crazy. We're <laughs> <laughs> going crazy. Give us one, Mike. Yeah. Listen, man, the crew has yeah. it, baby. Yes, sir. The crew has it, and you have it. Thank you so much for pulling up, Keith. Appreciate you, Keith. Oh, yeah. That was gay. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, that was good. Yeah. Damn, that was good. Appreciate you.